Kia ora tato. welcome to this first level 3 video on intermolecular forces. So last year when we looked at intermolecular forces, we would say that um, molecules have weak intermolecular forces between, other, um, between themselves, and these intermolecular forces require um, uh, a little amount of energy in order to break them, and so molecules, compared to ionic compounds or metals, have a very low melting point. In this, in this topic, this year, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into what those intermolecular forces are, uh, and yeah, be able to differentiate between three different types of intermolecular forces. So, these temporary or instantaneous dipole-dipole interactions are the first type of intermolecular force that we will go over. So, if we've got uh, two molecules here, so this is just, I'm just showing this very simply, this could be like, um, an ethane molecule, I just haven't drawn in any, any hydrogens, um, and this is just the, the nucleus of this, um, of this molecule. Could be oxygen, might be a better example. Uh, so around the, the nuclei here, this is just a very crude kind of depiction of what would be going on, and we've learned this year that we don't have, um, those simple orbitals that are like electrons orbiting around an atom um, or around a nucleus, we have electron clouds. So there's sort of a cloud of electrons um, because electrons act, you know, as a wave or a particle. Who knows? I don't know really, but they just think of it as more of an electron cloud than like a planet orbiting the sun. So we've got these electron clouds around these molecules. And if it was like this, where they're perfectly um, distributed around the molecule there, then there would be no um, dipole in this molecule. But what can happen is that instead of this being um, perfectly around the molecule like that, we can end up with electrons can be, the majority of them can be on one side at any one point in time. So we could end up with an electron cloud that is more asymmetric. So we would have the electrons over here, most of them, and that would give us a slight, and you might be able to see what's going to be happening here, that would give us a slight negative charge on that side of the molecule. And then on this side, because we've mostly got the protons and the nucleus facing the outside, we would have a slightly positive charge. And then what can happen is that because this is turned, um, this is slightly negative on the right hand side of the molecule, these electrons might actually start to repel the electron cloud in the next molecule. And so this electron cloud might actually be forced over a little bit. Um, so that can look like that as well, and so this ends up with a slightly negative charge on that side, and then we've got a slightly positive charge because of the protons and the nucleus on this side. And what we can end up here, notice we've now got a slightly negative charge and a slightly positive charge, and so there will be an electrostatic um, attraction between them, and so we have this instantaneous or temporary dipole-dipole um, um, attraction. So instantaneous dipole-dipole attraction. And that will be um, changing all the time, but that, that will exist, uh, you know, between molecules. So the thing that we need to know as well about these instantaneous dipole-dipole attractions is that as the molecular mass increases, so as the molecular mass increases, the electron cloud increases, and so the size of the dipoles increases. And so because the size of the dipoles increases, we're going to have an increased um, um, attraction between the molecules. Um, molecules so, because we've now got an increased um, attraction between the molecules, uh, that will mean that we've got, we need more energy to break forces, and therefore we've got a higher melting and boiling point. Okay, so um, all of those things linked in, that's kind of the, the ideas from last year, that the stronger the forces of attraction between the particles, the, the more energy that's required, and therefore the greater the boiling point. So this is the kind of thing that you would need to talk about um, in an exam answer. Um, 
So, for, yeah, for, let's just draw this out. So there's going to be, this might have an electron cloud like that. So that's clearly bigger than the last one. This would have an electron cloud like that. So this is going to have a slightly negative charge. This is going to have a slightly positive charge. And then we've got that instantaneous um, dipole-dipole attraction between the molecules, which is greater in this case than it was for the last one. Um, so practically we can look at that. So if we think of the um, alkane series, we've got methane, ethane, so on. Uh, we know that methane, ethane, propane are all sort of gases at uh, room temperature. Butane would be a gas as well, mainly. Um, we can get that in the butane canisters, that when we put a bit of pressure on it, it turns into a liquid. Um, and then pentane, heptane, uh, sorry, hexane, heptane. And then we know that octane is what we're getting now for petrol, and that has become a liquid. So as the length of the chain of an alkane series increases, the only intermolecular forces are these instantaneous dipole-dipole forces of attraction. But as the length of the chain increases, the... Um, electron cloud increases and so the strength of the attractions between the particles increases as well therefore there is an increased melting and boiling point uh, so that is instantaneous dipole dipole attractions it's quite a nice sort of um, thing to be able to picture i find uh, in the next video we'll be looking at permanent dipole dipoles which is basically just attractions between polar molecules so thanks for watching i'll see you for the next one oh, moving it around